Good morning, good morning, Facebook family. Good morning, True Vine family. Come on, let's put our hands together and bless the Lord in this place. For God is so good and his mercy endures forever. My name is Elder Tara Alexander. We just want to welcome you to this worship experience. Welcome you into this awesome place of worship where God is doing extraordinary things in the lives of his people. So let me tell you who we are. We are an ordinary people sort of serving an incredible God who has taken us on an incredible journey together. So our model is we are a church that is worth fed and spirit. We want to welcome you this morning to True Vine Church. Come on and put your hands together. I know there's not a lot of us, but we come to worship the Lord this morning. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. So all we ask that you um, write on your on the comment box, let us know who you are, where you're coming from. We want to say hey and just show our love and thank you for joining us. We are getting ready. This is Youth Sunday. So I need you to encourage our youth. It has been a while since we have had Youth Sunday, but I'm so excited because they're on fire for God. And I know you're going to be blessed by their worship this morning. We are bringing Elder Sheila, Sheila up to do the, the candles. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Amen. I will be reading the first Sunday of Advent. The first Sunday of Advent gives us the opportunity to center our thoughts on hope. It's a beautiful chance to remember the hope God offers to our lost and dying world and that he's given us through Jesus. Gal Galatians 4, 4 through 8 says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts prompting us to call out Abba Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. On this first Sunday of Advent, as we prepare our hearts to celebrate Jesus's arrival as a gift to all humanity, Let's stir up our hearts and homes, a sense, uh, a sense of anticipation. Over this Advent, we pray that hope will arise, up, will rise up in our spirit and tangible life-giving way. Amen. 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 You can come and light the candle. My apologies. Amen. Let's say amen for our praise and worship. Amen. Let us say come. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown. Where feet may fail And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours you are
Grass abounds in deepest waters. The sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me. You never fail and you won't start now. So I will call. So we'll rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine. Spirit, leave me where my trust is without bond.
Good morning, church. Good morning. I will be reading Psalms 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Good morning. Good morning, True Vine Church. I am Lenai Johnson. And I'm going to be doing the New Testament. I will be doing Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the reader, may the Lord have a blessing on the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Come on, let's keep those hands together. Come on, we come to worship the Lord this morning. We come to worship the Lord this morning as we prepare our hearts and our minds to tap into worship. God, we honor you. God, we thank you. God, we bless you. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to say thank you. God, we come to say thank you for all the things that you have done for us, God. God, we thank you for our life, our health, and our strength. God, we thank you for our families. God, we thank you for us getting, getting a chance to have one more time to be in your presence, God. God, we thank you because we are ready and expecting a mighty move from you today, oh God. God, we thank Thank you for everyone that has already gone forth in this worship service. God, I pray that you will continue to move, God. Bless every person that is in this building. Bless every person that is watching this service, God. God, we say, let your will be done this morning, God. We want to make you smile this morning, God. We offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, God. Holy and acceptable unto you, God. So we thank you, oh God. We pray that you bless our bishop this morning. Morning. God, give him a word that will touch the nation, God. We thank you that you are anointing his lips, anointing his walk. We thank you for our overseer, God. We thank you that the light that she is in our families, the light that she is into the community, God, and what they will do together to take this kingdom by force. God, we bless you in this place, God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, God. We will be guilty of worshiping you this morning. God, we will be guilty of giving you praise this morning morning because you have done so much for us God so much that we can't keep it to ourselves so we give you all the praise and glory for it is your name that is to be praised in Jesus name we pray amen and amen Amen. Let's just give the Lord another praise before you, as you're taking your seat, as you're taking your seat. God is good. He is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. You know, the scripture says, let us enter his gates with thanksgiving. So it's thanksgiving that opens the gates for us. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good uh, all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. So again, welcome. Facebook family, it, what time is it, True Vine? Amen. It is indeed 
Kingdom Investment Time. You know, I always say we don't have to give, but we get to give. You know, I can stand here all day long and tell you that this is good ground, which it is. I can tell you all the good places we give to, which it is that we sow seed into Feed the Children. We built wells. You know, but God say give as you have determined in your heart because he loves a cheerful giver. You know, God is a relational God. So he don't want you to be, he don't want you to give grudgingly. It's just like if you're in a relationship, you don't want them to love you uh, because you're forcing them to love you, right? He wants you to love, um, They you want to be loved because they want to love you. So same with God, he wants you to give to him. He wants you to love him and show him in the form of worship of giving. Amen. So uh, you can give um, those that are on Facebook. You can, it's a learn more button that you can um, tap that you can learn more about how to give. You can also give uh, by uh, typing TVC in the body of the text and typing it to 54244. You can also give by cash app with dollar sign true vine as a you can also give by uh, check or money. Um, money is still good. Amen. And we have envelopes. It still works. Like uh, Bishop says, cash still works. Amen. There are envelopes to be passed out if you need one, if you can raise your hand. Amen. We have one right here. Amen. Praise God. You just raise your hand. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Right, you all look like you're ready to give. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you for the offering, God, the tithe and the offering that is lifted up to you, God. We just thank you that your people live under an open heaven, God, that you will pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My needs are met. I'm out of debt. I have one store for the kingdom of God. We will now have, oh, all right, after, okay. Okay, okay, we will now have the introduction of our morning speaker, amen. Let's say amen for Brother Riley. Amen. There are a few things I like to say about Bishop. Bishop is like a grandfather to me. He is also a teacher. He is someone I can also look at to like when, like how to present myself whenever I am either coming here to church or am also looking for guidance. And mm, 
he all he bishop also worships God. He praises God. Bishop praises God whenever he is alone, when he has time, or whenever he's at home with family. He always he cares about his church family. He cares about his family at home. He cares about everyone that he knows and sees during the day and night. And I'm just really happy that I get to know him. can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes would see when your face is, is before me. I can only imagine I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe, will you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or in my knees, will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Oh, will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when the day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance in you, Jesus? Well, in all of you we still will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Or will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. When that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only
Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for this Thanksgiving season. Season to pause, to reflect on your goodness, to give you glory for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us as we enter into this season of Advent, the season of anticipation of the coming of the King. We are thankful. So many things to be thankful for. And if we named them one by one, we'd be here forever. But what we are grateful for is for you dying on the cross and giving us access to eternal life. Now we thank you, God, for the friends, the family, and those that we love, and those that love us, and those who are in our lives that are challenging. But through your grace, we can able to build community. Thank you, God, for the word that will come forth in season and out of season, a word that will bless your people. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated real quickly and want to thank God and say happy Thanksgiving to each of you. You know, this is actually one of my favorite times. I like to eat. So Thanksgiving is about food. And so, you know, but we had a great time. This was our first Thanksgiving that we had to split the family. One was in, we were up in Houston. The other half was down here, but thank God we was able to celebrate through the various means of communication. And I hope that you all had a pleasant and wonderful Thanksgiving. And Pastor Jeff, you're not the only one that found some, some, um, some weight, because I found some too. Hallelujah. Good food means good eating. Amen? Amen. I want to thank God for my daughters, Tara, Tasha, and Tanya. And I said mine, right? Because, you know, they're mine. They were good this week. Now, last week, they might be somebody else's, but, you know, they were good this week. And I want to thank God for my wifey. <laughs> Woman that makes my liver quiver and my spleen. Come on here. Come on here. Lord Jesus, look who just walked in the door. <laughs> she said, I walked in. He going to start with me already. Yes, I did. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be me if I didn't start. Yeah, I, I get it later, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm grown enough. All right. <laughs> Y'all ready for the word? Amen. Amen. And thank God for our musicians. If I don't know if we don't tell you enough, we do appreciate you. We do appreciate you. You guys are stuck with us and we appreciate that. <laughs> for Mike and Mike. <laughs> Clap for Mike and Mike. Amen. I want to continue part two, a heart for new things. Lessons I learned from my father. Lessons I learned from my father. Okay, I'm going to get there. Okay, I was, I was going to get to see part of my introduction was to thank them because Riley said some good things today and I almost in tears. Yes, amen. But I am so proud of Lisa, this stepping up to the plate and just taking on this responsibility. So we appreciate you. Appreciate you. So we're asking the youth to come out and keep on supporting because Sister Lisa is ready to take you off to higher heights. And she's picking some difficult songs now. I was like, Lord Jesus. Hey, Amen. If I was young, I'd join the team. And they might kick me up. <laughs> All right. You ready for... Uh... So our anchor text is Daniel 11.32. And we're going to pick up what our main text will be. First uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. First Corinthians chapter 4. 15 through 17. 
So our foundational text is from Daniel eleven thirty two. For those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong. And this is New King James says, carry out great exploit. Carry out great exploit. First Corinthians chapter 4, 15 says, For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have forgot, begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remain with you, uh, who remain with you of my ways in Christ and teach you everything in every church. This is the word of God for the people of God. People say thanks be unto God. As I said last week, I believe that we're living in a time where God is looking for people who will step up to the plate to help mentor, to become spiritual leaders, spiritual fathers for this generation. I believe that the season is now in the world that is confused, in the world that is turned upside down. I believe it's a job of the church to turn it right side up. And if we're going to turn it right side up, we need people to step up to the plate and become spiritual leaders to help this new generation to understand the signs of the time and to help them to become all that God has called them to be. Uh, So my assignment is really simple. My assignment is to recruit. I'm a recruiter. I'm an army recruiter, a Navy recruiter, all the recruiters, but I'm really a recruiter for the Lord. It is our season to become uh, that what God has ever always called us to be is to recruit people to become disciples of Christ. And so we have a task. We have a task to reach the young people. If there's ever a time that we have a task that is urgent, it is now. Paul even said in his in his text, I urge you. So I believe that we have an urgent calling to do what God has called us to do. So while we are building our A team, and y'all had to go back where whenever I preach about the A team is we have to have the father figure, which is a a Paul. We need a um, a Barnabas, which is your peer, but we need some Timothys, which is those that we will bring along. So we we need to build our A team. And I want to say this to Pastor Jeff. I didn't say this last week because God just put this in my in my spirit. One of the things that we're going to focus on in 2020 and he said his job was done <laughs> should never open your mouth in church and say that um we are going to build the men's fellowship through bible study we're going to pick a day not just not on a wednesday but a day of the week where we're going to gather men to have a bible study and we're going to grow our fellowship of men who are going to step up to the plate and so get ready. Um, there's some books that we're going to be reading and we're going to have some Zoom Bible study and we're going to invite the brothers, not just the brothers from True Vine, but people in your family, nephews that we're going to, I don't want to sound like I'm picking just on the men, but God put in my heart to build a brotherhood so we can step up to the plate. The women, y'all sisterhood is strong. I want to mess with the sisterhood because y'all, they, they, they're strong, they're strong, they're strong. They're strong. I don't even, I, if I step out there and say something about a sisterhood, they're going to gang up on me. That's how strong they are. Brothers leave you hanging, but the sisterhood band together. But I believe that part of what God has dropped in my spirit is to call the men to come together. And so we can invite the young men to step up. We're going to invite the young, your niece, your nephews, your, your co-workers to join us on this um, platform that Pastor Jeff will develop. He didn't know he had a task until today. Um, And so we're going to organize the brotherhood. We're going to get them ready. We're going to have teachers assigned and they'll have the books. We're all going to read our readings. So when we come, we have something to contribute. Amen. And it's going to be one hour, hour only. We're going to call it our power. We got two amens. We're going to call it the hour of power. 
three amens. I, I keep maybe by the end of the lesson we might get four amens. Amen. All right. So let me let me go on and we picked up on last week. We we talked about Dr. Chan said that we need leadership should have staff which is strong, teachable, attentive, firm, and faithful. S T A F F. And so let me just kind of develop that and get it, and then we'll be done. So a spiritual leader, a father, uh, must be strong. Because our task is to help the young people who will come in our life, the next generation, to become that all that God has called them to be. Our task is not just to take them to the river. Our task is to help them to cross the river. Our task is to help them to navigate the choppy waters. And, 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 and sometimes it may mean that they surpass what we gave them. Then. Hopefully that when we do our job right, that they will reach their fullest potential. And their fullest potential may eclipse what you do. And you have to be strong enough that your ego don't suffer. Uh, uh, this is not about you. It's about them growing and developing. And so even if they're t in terms of a task, if they have accomplished more than you ever accomplished, you've done your task. Um, your ego cannot be caught up in this where you get to the point that they didn't call my name. They're not supposed to call your name. Let me tell you why. But look at Moses. We talk about Moses today. But Moses would not have been Moses if he didn't have Jethro, his father-in-law. Yeah. We talk about Paul. And Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament scripture. But Paul wouldn't be Paul without uh, Cleophas. Am I right? Can, okay. Can I can look in? Yeah? I'm just looking because y'all ain't nobody saying amen. <laughs> You're listening. And so, yes, when we discuss this on, on words for the soul, we may call their names. But when they when those who write articles, those who write books, they're gonna write about the accomplishment of those that will succeed, but they never talk about those who prepared them to get to the place where they are. And you gotta become strong and comfortable with your name not being called. All right, all right. Uh, the, the next one we have to become teachable. teachable. You you never get to the place where you think you have arrived where you know it all. Right. I, I, I in my classroom I, I hesitate by using the word expert because I'm always learning to fine tune my classes. I try not to teach the same class twice in the same way. I'm always adding new stuff because the world around us is changing and I'm always trying to find ways to integrate what's going on into my classroom because I'm always trying to learn myself. I take lessons. I, I go to um, professional development. I, I do. I read a lot of books <laughs> because I'm always trying to be teachable. Now, let me just say this and don't get me. Don't get too rough on me, Pastor Jeff. Um, you are never too old to learn something. That's right. But the longer you take, <laughs> the harder it becomes. Let me just say that again. You're never too old to learn new things. But the longer it takes, the harder it comes. Because, you know, um, I get to it. Right. Uh, OK. Every time you try to get to it, something always gets in your way. It gets harder and harder to get to it. The next thing is we've got to become attentive. Now, I'm going to hang my hat here for a little while because I believe this is where I want to spend a lot of time, actually. Um, when I was studying this, God dropped in my spirit that we have to become attentive. Part of the problem is we become attentive to what's going on around us, but we're not attentive to what's going on inside us. All right. So if I'm going to be mentoring, I need to be attentive for what's going around, but I need to pay particular attention to what's going on inside my mentees. All right, all right. So uh, yeah. I want to speak to three categories of people. All right. Three categories of people. I want to speak to the young man and the young woman. Uh, even though you're old or uh, older, I want to speak to the inner child in you. All right. I want to speak to that younger one of you. I want to tap into you and, and speak to the one that says, I wish I had a father in my life. All right. All right. 
that younger one of you who wishes your father had been there for you. The one that, that played basketball, football, and looked on the sidelines and you saw other people's fathers around, but your father wasn't there. Right. I want to speak to that inner child that says, I graduated from high school, they called my name, and I went across that stage and everybody was hooping and hollering, but my father wasn't there. I want to speak to that inner child that says, I was jealous because everybody had a daddy, but mine wasn't there. I, I want to speak to that, that, that inner child that said, I had so many important events in my life. And every time I looked around, everybody who loved me was there, but my daddy was missing. All right. That's the child I want to speak to. I want to speak to that child and say today as a, as a spiritual father, I want to say to you what your father didn't say to you. Well done. All right. As a spiritual father, I want to say to you, um, all the accolades that you did not get from your father, you're going to get them today. Right. I want everybody is in here who's ever had to go to a graduation and not have your daddy around. Just raise your hand. Just in case I might talk to somebody in here. I know there's some online because I know some for a fact. But I want to say to you, even though your daddy wasn't there, your spiritual father was. And if you didn't get the standing ovation that you should have gotten, I'm going to give you one today. That's for the hand clap that you didn't get when you crossed the stage. That's for the hand clap when you scored a winning touchdown that you didn't get. When you scored the, the final basket and you won the championship, that's what you didn't get. Matter of fact, you may have lost the championship. You may have lost the game, but you never got a hug from your daddy. That's the hand clap you should have gotten. That's the hand clap you said, I love you. Even, that's, even if they weren't there, that somebody still loved you. I want to speak to the next person. And that's the one that says, I wish my daddy liked me. I wish my daddy liked me. One of the reasons I think Facebook, why Facebook is so popular is because that's where you go you get your likes. Uh, when, when, when you're seeking and craving that somebody will like you, you post something on Facebook and you get immediate gratification. Likes. If you post something, you don't get no feedback. It messes with your psyche because you're craving what your daddy didn't give you. Huh? Where you felt ab abandoned by your daddy. Now you're looking for somebody to like you, wondering why your daddy didn't like you. I'm going to ask you to do something today. Not for them, for you. All right, all right. Release them. You can't move forward being stuck and keep trying to ask yourself why my daddy didn't like you. You started out, why, I wish my daddy would love me. But you move from love to like. Can, can at least like me a little bit? And so now you're craving for somebody to like you. And as soon as somebody comes in your life that looks like they like you, you gravitate to them. Because you're still craving the approval of your daddy. And the last person I want to move to is the inner person I want to speak to is, I wish my daddy was more involved. Huh? You grew up in a home and your daddy was there. You saw him, but he was not involved. I want you to release him. And I want to say this, I'm not giving every daddy a pass, but I want you to release this daddy because if you don't release him, you'll grow up maybe just like him. Mm. Because your daddy may not be involved, not because he didn't want to be involved. He may not know how to be involved. Many of us came out of homes where our daddies were there, paid the bills, put food on the table, but were not involved in your homework. They didn't want to be involved. They didn't know how to be involved. You got to release them because they did the best they knew how to do because they followed the examples from their daddies. If you don't release them, you come just like them. Because you, the, the law of Genesis is right. 
Each thing produced after its kind. So if I'm going to produce after my kind, I'm going to produce off of what I know and what I see. And if what I see is what is being before me, if I don't release that model, I become that model. So you got to release him. I know it's hard to release him because you want him. You want you want to be. You wish you could be in your life. You, you, he, he did the best he could. He put food on the table. He paid the bills. He went to work. He came home and you wanted to help you with your homework, but he was too tired. Let me also say this. Sometimes the reason they might not help you with the homework, they didn't know how to help you. Um, my kids came home one day with some new math. What happened to the old math? And they came in and they started, daddy help me. I looked at that thing and I was like, mm -hmm. they gonna know how you smart. <laughs> I looked and they started teaching me how to do this new math. And I was confused, uh, Pastor David, I got confused because they were quadrants. You have to read the question, rewrite the question, figure it out, and then show the solution. Now this is what messed me up. If you got three of the four quadrants right, you was right. That's what they told me. Even if the final answer was wrong, it's still right because you understand the, how to get there. I said, no, that ain't right. I went to the school. I went to the school, sat down with a teacher. I said, if I can rewrite, if I can write it, figure it out, show you and get the wrong answer, how is that right? Because on the test, you get graded on the right answer. I lost that battle because it was in the curriculum. So when they came home with homework, I used to pray to God, don't ask me, because I don't know. But maybe your daddy didn't know how to help you, and you held it against him. So you got to release him. They bought presents, nice presents. The latest gizmos gets, gets and gadgets, they bought presents. But what you wanted was their presents. You wanted them and they gave you stuff. Right. And the more stuff they gave you, the more they thought they were doing something because you kept receiving and you kept putting a smile on your face and you kept saying, thank you, daddy. But what, it, what you wanted inside was their presence. And so then because they were in the home, they were presence, but they weren't present to you because they were not there when you needed them. Am I in the house? You got to release them. You got to release them. Now they got older. Now you want to have the conversation with them. Uh, but they don't know what to talk about. Because they never had the conversation with their daddies. They, know, they don't know. You, you want to sit down and say, Daddy, let's have the conversation. And they want to talk about the weather. They want to talk about the, the Republicans and the Democrats. But you want to talk about us. They're not comfortable with the us because there was nobody there for them when they want to know about the us. And you want to talk, but they don't know how to talk. And you get mad because you see, you see them talking to their friends on the telephone. You see them interacting with other people and you wish they would interact with you like to interact with others. Here's the difference. With them, they can become fake, but with you, they got to become present. You ain't got me yet. It's a difference between others and you. With you, you want more than they can give. But you got to release them. Because if you don't release them, the residue of the longing will always be with you. And when you have your children, and if you're not careful, you can become just like them. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. And, and so now we... We got to move past. We got to move past because if I don't release them, if I don't forgive them, if I don't, if I don't move on, I can't help others to move on. So I got to become attentive and I got to become firm. I got to know how to give some tough love, but I also got to become faithful to them. I can't lead, lead them to the water and walk away from them. And then my last point here is, are you the next Timothy? Now, let, let me, let me just say this. Um, Pastor Jeff, after we develop our manhood and, and the brotherhood, we're going to reach out and, re and bring up the nieces. I noticed the women's going to be strong and y'all got a good, 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 good program. 
but you can only do so much because you need some men to come in there to bring some affirmation. Now that you can't do it. Now, I don't want y'all to tune me out and think I'm being sexist. Men have a role in providing affirmation to our young women. And if we don't come in and step in and help working alongside our women, our young women are always trying to find some affirmation. When they leave, we can be there. All right, so are you the next Timothy? This is what Paul said. For this reason, I send you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful son. Uh, and Tim, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 20 says, For I have no other like minded who will sincerely care for your state. Timothy is a faithful, Timothy is beloved, Timothy cares, and he's like minded. That's how Paul described Timothy. I'm really almost done. Um, so if we are going to become the next Timothy, we have to be willing to take on the characteristics of those who are mentoring. All right. Pastor Jeff shared some things today in, in, in Sunday school about um, Thanksgiving with the family. Pastor Sheila, I'm playing for y'all. It was challenging, I understood. Yeah. Challenging because um, Timothy did not know how to receive. Because Timothy thought he had arrived. Yeah. But he mentioned a mentor that is his mentor. And if he had a like-mindedness of that mentor, the whole interaction of Thanksgiving would have been different. Because I know that mentor. And I've interacted with that mentor and I've seen the respect of that mentor. If he had picked up the characteristic of that mentor, Thanksgiving would have been great for y'all. Yeah. So when I get around my mentors, I can't help but interact with them and pick up some of those things. Matter of fact, one of the greatest compliments some people have given me is that they all say, oh, you're vicious boy. Yes, I am. You know why? Because he pours into me. I got to the place somebody said to me one time, well, I, I know you're part of new creation. No, I'm not. I was never in new creation, never joined new creation. I was never birthed out of new creation. But we are prodigies of Pastor Copeland and Bishop Copeland, who have been mentoring us for 28 years, 29, somewhere in that, a lot of years. But we pick up characteristics over the years. Not that we are exactly like them, but there's some things that they have taught us that we hold on to, that, that we look and resemble some parts of them. Am I doing okay? Because I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Um, so we got to become like-minded. That means one of the things I learned years ago when I took a course called Where There's a Will, There's an A. Y'all remember that? I remember that. Yeah. It's saying, the first thing it says is you develop a relationship with your instructor. That's the first thing they taught us. And secondly, you go into his office or her office and look what they're reading and read what they read. And every time I go into Bishop's office, I look what he's reading. If it's a book on his desk, says, Bishop, you reading this? You finished with it? Because <laughs> I'm going to take it. Because I read what he reads, and sometimes I take what he reads. I say, oh, you got a note in here. You, you, you want to take a picture of this? Because I'm taking a book. He said, oh, you're going to take my book. You can buy one, too. I know I can, but you're my daddy, and I'm going to take one. So I'm taking his. And because now he's got a note in there, guess where I go? I read his note. Because now I know what he's thinking. Am I doing okay? Because yeah. if I, so we got to learn how to mentor the next generation. Not that we want to become mini me's. I don't want nobody to come mini me. But we got to give them principles that they can hold on to. So where the earthly fathers may have failed, us, the spiritual leaders, will come alongside and help them to become all that God has called them to be. And I am done. Some of you won't be long. Okay. This is where I do question and answers. Yeah, we're not doing question and answers? Oh, yeah. Okay, anybody want to? We're going to give you a couple minutes to do some question and answers or statements. Question and answer statements. This is where you get risky. Because I don't know what's, oh, Sheila's going to ask a question. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, I actually want to make a statement. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were talking about the fathers, my I grew up with my father in my home, but he was the father that um, uh, provided, he provided very well, 
However, he wasn't there for the homework. He wasn't there for different activities that we that I was involved in in school. And so even though he was there, I still needed that affirmation from him that I didn't always get. Yes. So as I went through life and I didn't understand why I was the way I was in certain arenas of my life, uh, that was the common denominator, the affirmation that I needed. Amen. Amen. It's so true. Now, unless you grew up in my household, my daddy was an engineer. We, every summer break, he gave us math problems. Before we can do chores, math problems, then play. Then he'll come home lunchtime to grade them. And if you didn't get them right, he gave you more. I hated math. <laughs> but, I'm, look, but again, my dad was involved. <laughs> Lord Jesus, sometimes too involved, but he was involved. Any others? Anything online? If you got comments online or a question, put in the chat. We are, not the chat, the comment box. We are management. Oh, oh, this could be, <laughs> I know how she thinks. <laughs> um, my question is, um, for the ones that have grown up with fathers in their houses that do um, still give words of affirmation, why is it that they still seek more outside of the house than what they get in the house? That's a good question. I don't have the answer. No. Um, that, the question is, why are we constantly seeking more? Right. That is human nature. We will always seek more. And one of the reasons why the enemy um, was able to disrupt God's plan, because he got to Eve. They had everything, right? Everything they could need. And he came in there and said, but I can give you something that you can't see right now. If you eat from this fruit, you can become like God. So if we are constantly seeking affirmation or whatever that may be, the enemy will provide that what you think you're missing, but it's already in front of you. Am I making sense? And so if we get into that mode of the seeking or constantly needing, then when that person comes along, the enemy knows and will provide that what you think you're missing. And it's, so you started out saying you're getting it, but you're seeking more. Sometimes you don't appreciate what you get until it's gone. All right, that's 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 a good question. Did I answer your question? Okay, one more. So right, right over here, we got two. One online. Okay. All right, Bishop. Um, so I have a nine-year-old. So I am trying to be, you know, all of the above. I'm trying to be involved and trying to provide. Uh, how do you go about dealing with the boundaries that they're trying to set when you're trying to be involved in what they're, you know, right now he's, he's at the age where when he was younger, yes, everything is, you know, we talk everything. Now he's trying to set these boundaries. So how do you respect those boundaries and how do you know when not to push through as a, you're the parent. Yeah. Are you co-parenting? I'm co-parenting. Yeah. Okay. So you're not, he doesn't move with you all. He's half, half and half. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this this happens to every child. Every child gets to the place they think they're grown. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they think they know more than their dad is. Right? I went through that period. This, this is going to sound real crazy. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep showing him that you're involved and you love him. He will appreciate that when he gets in his later part of his teens. I heard a comedian say this one time and I started laughing, but it's true. He said, God gave us teenagers so we can understand how he feels like. Because most of the time, the teenagers try to deny your existence until they get to the place they realize I miss your existence. Right. So keep doing this because what they're trying to do is establish their growing and they want to let you know I don't need you as much. Right. But that's what they really need you. They really need you. And you keep doing what you do. Keep being the dad. Keep showing up. Keep doing whatever you do. Because when you're not there, they're going to hold it against you. The other part is, come with your uh, co-part parent. It's good to mix. Good. Thank God for that. Because sometimes the other party can taint the water by making you look like a bad guy. And so hopefully that lines of communication stay open between the two of you. And so the other part is that you've got to both of y'all 
have to constantly reinforce each other. Because if you're saying one thing and she's saying another, then he can play on that. That makes sense? So keep doing what you're doing. Um, part of what's happening, he's growing. <laughs> and he's, as my daddy would say, he's smelling himself. And all of us will smell ourselves. <laughs> so, okay. First of all, I got to tell you, this is why we can do what we're doing in 2020. We're going to step in and become the, this is why I started, we're recruiting men. We are recruiting men to step in, to become, help them young men, to give them a model that works. Because what's happening now, they, they, why, why gangs are growing and all those other things, because the gangs are providing what they didn't have. A sense of belonging, a sense of family. That's why we are going to do True Vine. We're going to grow this men's fellowship and become the, what we call a men of iron. We're going to become the men of iron and recruit them so they can become in part of our lives. Question two. Mm -hmm. For those who don't have fathers, how do you not seek a replacement? For those who don't, how do we not seek, let me see if I understand the question. For those who don't have, have fathers. fathers, how do you not seek a replacement? Okay, I think I understand the question. I hope I understand the question. Sometimes we give ourselves permission not to want what we want. So if I want a father, my father's not there and I don't have anybody to replace them, then I, I say to myself, I don't need one. But deep down inside, I'm longing for one. So I will find other ways to substitute that. Sometimes there's drugs, sometimes it's alcohol, sometimes it's sex, sometimes it's a bunch of things we use to substitute what we want. So what I would say to you, whoever's asking that question is, tap back into your inside or the people you're talking about and find out, have you shut down that part of you that's longing for and really it's not dead because it keeps nagging at you. Then I say to you, open yourself up and allow the uh, other people to come alongside of you and walk with you. If I understood the question correctly. Are there books on the subject of fatherhood? Um. There's books, I can't name them right now. There's books about spiritual father and there's a lot of books out there. But let me also say this. One way to read a book, let me give you one book right now. I think um, the, the Search for, for Significance by Robert McGee. Yeah, The Search for Significance right, uh, by the book and the workbook. Because I us read the journal, but I'm, I'm, I'm not recommending the journal. Journal helps. But the workbook and the book itself will help you to understand your significance. And then we can branch out because those are the type of people who ever made that comment that we need to join us in, in our 2020 vision for the, for the hope. I said 2020, uh, 2022. Thank you for the lovely correction. Thank you. Sir. He wrote down 2022. Thank you. That's what it's good to have people around here correct you. Cause did I say 2020? Yeah. You know, 2020 came and left and left a vacuum. Sometimes I'm still trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> and that's it anymore. Yeah. So back to that one, that last, that last comment. Um, that's why we got to do what we do. And then when we get the model down packed, we write the book. We write the book. Yes, sir. One more. Okay. How do fathers who have been on the bench. <laughs> How to get, get off the bench. Get off the bench when now son or daughter don't want to hear it. Okay. First of all, the father who's been on the bench I first have to recognize you've been on the bench, step up to the, to the plate and ask for forgiveness for being on the bench. Um, I can't act as if it's all good now that I'm trying to get off the bench and not acknowledge the damage that was done when I was sitting on the bench. So I had to take step up and say, I was wrong. Forgive me. 
because that's the starting point. Once you get that established, then you ask them, listen to this, you ask them, how can I now make up for the void that I cause? Um, you think you know from your perspective, but you need to know from their perspective what the, how you can fill that hole. Because if it's like back in the day when somebody hurt you, you excuse me, when you hurt somebody, they're crying. This is what you do. All right, punch me. Right? Punch me. I am now determined to you how to make amends by dictating the terms. That's not going to work. You have to open yourselves up to hear what they have to say. Now, let me say, you might not like what they have to say. You might not enjoy hearing what they have to say, but if you truly want to get off the bench, you have to, you have to hear. You must hear what they have to say. And then you, from there, figure out what the next steps are. Because they are going to determine how to move forward and not you. But you have to demonstrate that you're not going to go back on the bench when things get rough. Because one of the reasons you might, you may have went on the bench because something got rough and you decided to sit down instead of stand up. Now, if they seen that, you got to earn that trust back. So you, when you stand back up, that you're not going to sit back down. So it's not going to be easy. But I think I answered the question. Yeah, <laughs> <it>. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, um, what was he? Come on. I ain't heard from you this morning. <laughs> Praise God. Come on, let's clap for the word of God this morning. Man, that was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I praise God for that. Amen. For those who are <clears throat> on Facebook, I tell you, if you not liked, tagged, or shared someone, it's not too late. But I want you to know if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, in having a spiritual mentor, that's someone that has a relationship with God. Even right now, if you have not made the choice that you want to say, I want to give my life to the Lord, connect with someone who is going to help you to find your purpose and know how to pray for you. You may not have that walk yet, but connect with somebody that can guide you spiritually. We already know what the world can do, but we want to let you know what God can do in the favor of God opens doors much faster than what the world does. And it's just, it's, it's just a blessing. We praise God for everyone that's here. And I know you guys have um, had a wonderful Thanksgiving Thank you for your presence. We're going to pray. But if you don't have a relationship with God, first thing, always before we get off, we want to, if you need that relationship, put in the chat, I, I, I want salvation. I need the Lord in my life. Today is your day. The Bible says, harden not your heart. The Lord loves you. He went to the cross for you. He bared those stripes for you. No matter what you've done, he cares and he loves you. So, God, we thank you right now for your word. We thank you for loving us and forgiving us, for extending your grace and your mercy, for extending the word that came forth to encourage us, to empower us, to impact us, that we may be strong, that we may be wise, that we may be fishers of men, God, that we would be recruiters. Because in this time, we need to let people know there's hope, there's salvation, and they don't have to walk their journey alone. God, so we thank you right now as we're speaking, God, that you're touching hearts right now. You're saving some right now. You're letting somebody know that they, they don't have to throw in the towel right now. We thank you. You're saving someone that's saying, I'm going to commit suicide. Not so. We thank you right now. They heard a word today and they say they're valuable. They have somebody that loves them. They have somebody that will applaud them when they didn't have it. God, we thank you that even as we are forgiving and releasing today, God, that you are feeling that that our affirmation when we're seeking after, most of all, we seek ye first. If we seek you first, not men, women, but seek you, you will fill every void. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you for your presence that we hunger for you the more today. Thank you. We want you, you can fill that emptiness. God, even if we're married, if we're not married, you can. You can fill us with more of your love, the fruit of your spirit. So we say, have your way. Let that will be done unto today. And let all God's people say, amen.
Amen and amen. If you're online, let us know what this message meant to you. If you're not chatted or put any comments, put some comments in. We have people who are reading and will respond to you because I know this word has touched your heart. Let it be a blessing. Listen, for those who want to pick up last week's message, you can also pick it up on Facebook, but we do have a, a YouTube channel which is True Vine Church SA. You can, don't put just True Vine, you get the other True Vine. But SA and all the messages from way back when is there, but part one is also there and your message is there too. Amen. So we will put it, our youth are getting ready to sing for us. Amen. Wednesday will be your back on Bible study. Don't forget about, yeah, she's a young person too. Um, Bible study, we have prayer on Tuesday, so please connect with us. God bless. We'll meet after Bible study. We need all the leaders to stay on Zoom. Amen. shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And we sing